I'm gonna give it a whirl, see if it, uh, see if the water actually turns on. The valve, signs of life. Oh, oh yeah, look at water. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> cool. Good morning, guys. Today we're at the uh, small cabin in the woods. If you're just joining me, this is your first video. So this is our off-grid cabin. We've been working on it for a while. So today we're gonna address, I guess it's a pretty major problem. There is no water here. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually build a rainwater collection system from reclaimed ABS pipe. And we're also gonna do a rain catchment system. So a large tote, we're gonna show you how to connect that all in together. And then we're gonna actually plumb the sink in with, I think it's a, it's a salvaged RV pump that we, uh, we salvaged from a camper that we took apart uh, a couple years back. When you're looking for material, most of the time you can't find something that's long enough. You don't have enough of it. So if you could collect it over time and stockpile, say, lengths of four inch ABS pipe. Now, if you were to buy this stuff, it's, it's about 50 bucks a length and it's 12 feet long. And a lot of the times it's not long enough or, you know, you want it to be whatever. You want it to be 30 feet. Buying couplings are expensive. And on this build, I sort of vowed not to spend any money. So I have a bunch of this stuff lay laying around. So what I'm gonna do is, I haven't tried this before. Well, I've tried it before, I know it works, but I haven't officially tried it before. So I wouldn't use this in your house. Like if, if you're worried about a leak, I wouldn't do it. This is an eave trough, so it's not, it's not, you know, mission critical sort of thing. So what I did to make this stuff work is actually I used just to basically, I buttered the ends of these pipes with ABS glue. So just run of the mill, ABS glue, and I butter the ends. And then what I did is I let that dry up a little bit. And then I did the other side. Stuff smells great, doesn't it? You let that tack up. And then you do the other side again. So it's the second time that you've got a nice thick coating of ABS glue. And that what you do is you bury them together, just like this. If you're using a traditional coupling, you don't really have to wait any time. So what I did was I used an old piece of two and a half inch steel track. It's actually steel stud. So steel stud, and then I use it as a guide and it allows me to actually place the pipe on the guide to dry. And that lines up both sides. It makes it nice and straight. And you give that, I don't know, I think I gave it a half an hour a piece. I was able to take scraps of four inch ABS pipe and make it really long. That's gonna be my eave trough. I just gotta cut a channel, mount it on the roof. So I'm gonna make a template, a little mock-up to see if this is actually gonna work with, an, with a smaller section and then cut into my big big piece pipe because I don't wanna wreck my big piece pipe. The idea is to cut down a channel in it and uh, mount, it to the, mount it to the eaves. Okay, let's get started. So there's our pipe. There's our channel in our pipe. Um, as you can see, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this pipe on the edge and it's just tucks in behind there. And then all the water that flows off the roof is gonna go right in that pipe. And we're gonna collect it and we're gonna wash some dishes. I'm using a chalk line to mark the center of the pipe. When installing your gutter, always ensure there's a slope. You want to slope from the high side to the low side where you're collecting your water. So 
So that uh, cedar plug that we cut out, we're just going to put a little bit of silicone on the edge. This here is a threaded barbed fitting. So it has a half inch thread on one side and a barbed fitting on the other and it allows you to connect your pipe on it. So if it ever gets clogged, you can disconnect it and clean it out. So when you're drilling your hole, you just want to make it slightly smaller than your threads. And I've attached some silicone on the threads in order to prevent it from leaking. It's important to filter the water before it gets into the tote. So in order to do so, I've created a small filter or screen that goes inside the inlet pipe to prevent any debris from growing down into the pipe. And if it gets clogged, you basically pull it out, shake it, and you're good to go again. Can you hear that? Rain, right on cue. So it started to rain. My silicone's not quite dry yet. Let's see if I could get the tote where the rainwater is going to be stored in place. Um, before we get too much rain. Next step is to plug the tote so the water doesn't all flow. Now, this is the valve it came with. Um, there is no real great way. I guess there's a cam lock thing. I don't have one of those, but I have one of these. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna epoxy this guy in place. So I've mixed up some epoxy and then butter the inside. I'm gonna butter the threads. It's only a thousand liters, it's gotta hold back, so. You hear that? Can you hear the thunder in the background? It's coming. So that's a dialogue with a galvanized uh, reducer. That's the stuff I used. plastic bonder What if it structural adhesive it's structural so it should be okay again this is not what i recommend doing this is just what i'm doing so do your own research so this guy screws into the back of the tote this is the valve the main off valve from your water supply and this will be the feed to the tap so it's starting to rain I'm losing all my rainwater. this is a sump pump hose that a guy named Michael gave me. He's like, you want one of these? And I was like, I don't know. No, I don't. And then he was like, well, you never know when you need one. It's true. I, I never know when I need one. So, ah. come on, the rain is coming. All right, so that's gonna have to do for now. Let's uh, get my tools out of the rain. Oh, jeez. Oh, You're saying, put the camera down. Go get all your tools. Well, why don't you come with me? I'm curious to see if this is gonna collect as much as I think it's gonna collect. All right, well, I'm gonna grab some more tools and then we're gonna, we're gonna watch it rain. All right, set you down. That could have uh, not happened any, any perfect, more perfect. So I'm underneath the eave trough, and I don't know if you can see that. You can see the water dripping in to the eave trough. See, I got, uh, that's the back of it. So you can see it drip it in. Let's go take a quick peek over there to see uh, how well it's going actually into the into the tank. I don't want to get too soaked. Whew. Uh, all right, let me go check. All right, well, I'd say that's a success. We got uh, all the tube. I should have cut it a little shorter. Let's see how much, uh, we'll let this rain and then we'll uh, check and see how much water we got inside the tank. Rain's scary, eh, Bean? It's okay, buddy.
So we're back at the cabin the next day. As you can see, it rained quite a bit last night. Uh, we've got, I don't know, like based on the level on the line at the side, we've got about 100 gallons of water, which, which is pretty significant. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the, the collection system. So it did work. So um, yeah, now we're gonna, we're gonna hook it up. We've got a little 12 volt uh, pump that we've scavenged from the old camper. So we're gonna put that in line, pump it to the sink, and we're gonna have indoor water. This tank here, generally they have those metal cages around them. Um, I use those for firewood. So I don't, uh, I don't really wanna use one for a tote. So I'm going to reinforce that with wood, hook up the pump, and uh, yeah, indoor water. This is our uh, 12 volt pump. There's a directional arrow on the pump. I don't know if you can see that. It, it points to the direction of where the water flows. So we want to go from the tote into the cabin. So there it is. So we mount that to the board, plumb it up, hook it up, water. Pex plumbing. These are this is a half inch barbed. I got them at the, uh, the junk store. They're a dollar each. I don't know if you can see that, which is significant savings from the multi-dollar each. So anyways, I got two. They're gonna screw on on both sides. And then I can use the PEX pinch rings. This is a PEX pinch ring crimp tool. It's about 80 bucks. It's, it's expensive, but it's actually, it's the fastest tool I can think of using. Um, it's homeowner, homeowner do it yourself friendly. So what you do is you, you get yourself, you got yourself your PEX piping, which is the future or if it's the present of plumbing. You got your pinch ring, you slide your pinch ring over your pipe and then you use your crimp ring or your crimp tool to pinch the ring on. And basically what it does is it makes a watertight fitting. So that's, that's the fitting there and that's an end cap. And then you're pinching it and, and that you're done. And they give you a, uh, a guide tool. And basically if you want to make sure your ring is pinched enough, you slide it on and it, and it says go or no go. So as long as you've got it pinched right, you're gonna be sure you don't have any leaks in the future. Um, so yeah, that's a cool tool. That's... Pinch ring. This little bowl here, actually, I just took it off and it actually, this is our strainer. So this gets rid of the particulates out from the water. Particulates meaning big chunks. Um, and it does smell a little bit like antifreeze, so it was put away properly. So that's good. I'm pretty confident in that. So yeah, now we're ready to plummet in the uh, cabin. The Dwayne, the Dwayne. Okay, so this is underneath the sink. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to attach this. This is a tailpiece adapter. This is Well, this is a tailpiece. The, the brass piece here is a tailpiece, and then this is a tailpiece adapter, and it hooks up to an inch and a half uh, piece of ABS pipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw it on. The company's called Rigid, and it's a pipe cutter. Now, it allows you to cut ABS pipe without using a saw. It's really messy when you use a saw and you cut a UBS pipe, little chunks of pipe go flying everywhere. This thing's really neat, because what you do is you basically figure out where you want it, you set your pipe, you set your tool on the pipe, it holds it by itself, and then you just turn. Just like that, you get to cut a pipe, there's no mess, it's like exact, it's square, big box stores carry it, little box stores carry it. It's a tool by Rigid and it's an ABS pipe cutter. It's cozy under here, isn't it? So I'm gonna measure basically from this, this tailpiece adapter. So the tailpiece adapter slides up and down, so uh, you can adjust 
your height. So what I'm going to do is actually measure from the floor up and that allows me some play. So if I go 25 inches on the floor, poke a hole through the floor, comes out through the bottom of the cab of the cabin and then I'm going to put an elbow on it and drain somewhere out the front. Um, there was a debate whether or not to put a uh, P-trap in and in this case I don't think I'm going to simply because I think it's going to freeze uh, and break. So there's water standing in the P-trap. It's not draining. It's, it's basically draining into the ground. So there's not going to be sewer gases or whatnot and that's what the P-trap prevents. So I guess the worst thing we'll have is a mouse climbing up the pipe, which would be interesting. My original plan was to go straight down and uh, there's a joist in the way so it's always good to check beforehand to ensure that where you want to go is uh, indeed clear. So I've, uh, I've put it off to the side now. It makes it a little more complicated because I've got to do a jog in the pipe. So I'm gonna, I cut all those pieces. Now I'm just gonna glue them up. Oh, that smell. I'm gonna give it a whirl, see if it, uh, see if the water actually turns on. So the valve, oh, signs of life. And then, let's see. Oh yeah, look at water. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> cool. And that's the sound of a RV pump, I'm assuming. So yeah, look at that, that's pretty impressive. I'm impressed, are you impressed? That's cool. I always like to get stuff up and running. So as you can see, this, is, this isn't uh, very pretty. So now I'm going to work on uh, making it pretty. We got a rain collection system. I didn't do the other side because there's big plans for the other side. You got to stay tuned for that. And then once the other side's, the other side of the cabin's complete, isn't complete, maybe there's an addition going on. There's big plans for that. Do a rainwater collection system and actually how to plumb it in to your outdoor off-grid cabin or whatever you, whatever you feel like plumbing in, maybe a shed or a, I don't know, maybe an outdoor kitchen. Uh, on a next, next video, I'm going to actually, I've got an idea on how to supply hot water. That's going to be an interesting build. I'll see you on the next one.